Have you ever in your life experienced being translocated to a different world while you're watching a movie? This is what happens to us when we watch David Fincher directed film 7 released in 1995. Today we are going to analyze 7. Before moving further with the video, please subscribe and press the bell icon for further notifications. So here we go. 7 isn't just a movie. It's a psychological trip through hell that leaves your head spinning, your heart pumping and your stomach crying out for the medicinal properties of a stiff whiskey or a gin. Not since The Exorcist has there been a mainstream Hollywood movie as extraordinarily dark, bleak, intense and as monumentally scary as this. From its sensory assaulting opening credits through to its desolate and very shocking finale, Seven goes for the gut and like an insidious gnawing in the pit of your stomach, it never lets up. Been warned. This is not a comfortable viewing at all. Talking about the story, in an anonymous American city in which it always rains and nobody seems to have bothered to pay their electricity bill, a serial killer is busy slaying his victims according to the seven deadly sins, namely gluttony, greed, sloth, envy, etc leaving a sick procession of dead bodies, each one murdered in a way related to their own particular sin. A wealthy defense lawyer is forced to cut off a pound of his own flesh, showing greed. An obese man is forced fed until his stomach explodes portraying gluttony, a prostitute depicting lust. Well, rest you can see for yourself. Assigned to the case are veteran cop William Somerset, played by Morgan Freeman a methodical, world-weary thinker and a week away from retirement after 34 years on the force, and his hot-headed young new partner David Mills, played by Brad Pitt, recently relocated, along with his wife Gwyneth Paltrow, to this hellhole of a city eager to make a name for himself. Try as they might, they are always one step behind the murderer, but all too late, his true motives are revealed to them. Director David Fincher, who previously helmed the equally gloomy Alien 3, creates an overwhelming sense of unease, presenting a world of irredeemable ugliness, a grim, melancholic, depressing, decaying society from which there is no escape. Although the director, David, and the screenwriter Andrew Kevin Walker, who was inspired to write Seven while working as a clerk at Tower Records, borrow so many familiar elements for their story, they seem determined to give it an uncommonly nasty spin. So the crime scenes are rendered in a sickening detail and the whole film has a murky, madly pretentious tone. Director David didn't pick up another script for 18 months. Such was his exhaustion and frustration following the completion of Alien 3. Apparently, he agreed to direct Seven after one reading of Andrew Kevin's screenplay, because he was drawn to his hard-hitting delivery about inhumanity. He stated, it's psychologically violent, it implies so much. Not about why you did it, but how you did it. For the camera work, specially altered film stock was used to make the visuals look as dark and unsettling as possible, which is complemented well by Howard Shore's music score. So visually, the effect is that of spending a long time looking at a bowl of oatmeal on a rainy day. Only during its last scenes does the film brighten, partly because of the actor who is revealed as the killer and partly because the action finally moves outdoors in broad daylight. In what may seem a repetition of the odd couple, with the story of the protagonist, Seven rises above most with its dark production design to show the hellish environment in which the story takes place. An unnamed rain-soaked city that is literal hell on earth. The cinematography from skilled Iranian cinematographer Darius Fonji gives a throwback to the Neuer films in the 1940s with the high contrast light and darks in the picture. The shadows representing the blurred morality of the detectives. The Oscar-nominated editing from Australian editor Richard Francis Bruce a back-to-back -back nomination following his work on the Shawshank Redemption the previous year, paces the procedural film along in an engaging way and adds tension and perspective with the choice of shots and cuts. And composer Howard Shore creates a moody, 
dark score to underline the horrors and mysteries that confront us during the story. This movie is dark and gritty, but despite the gruesomeness of the crimes, this is no slasher movie. In the same way that Manhunter relied on the psychological approach for its impact, so too does Seven. The victims are never killed on screen. Instead, we catch glimpses of the corpses at the crime scene or in the morgue or in the snatches of black and white police photographs that are flashed before us. Perhaps more disturbingly, you are mostly left to visualize in your mind the full extent of the killer's atrocities when they are discussed by Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. As the cops move closer to the culprit, whose identity is revealed late and by then it doesn't really matter anyway since it's fundamentally irrelevant the movie shifts from thriller territory into the realm of horror and it's here that fincher and screenwriter andrew pull off their greatest cow a piece of cinematic genius the most downbeat ending unimaginable ever you come away reeling emotionally and mentally shaken and most definitely stirred muttering to yourself that they couldn't possibly have done that but they did oh boy they did it for the ending alone this is simply unmissable that's the end of the video guys please do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for further notifications god bless you all and you people are requested to suggest me the videos or the movies that you would like to be discussed on this channel thank you